I think that it's important to care, care about any species that we share the earth with, just you know, from a moral standpoint. But it's also important for frogs in particular because they can be sort of the canary in the coal mine for us. They have thin skin that absorbs chemicals faster than ours do. Uh, they can give us an indication of when trouble's on its way before it actually starts to affect them. If they suddenly start declining or some disease is hitting them or they're declining for no reason that we can tell, that's going to be a bit of an alarm signal that we might want to start testing the waters and the wetlands that they're, they're living in to see if there's something going on. As far as we know in Delaware, they're doing pretty well. Um, the first five years of the DAMP data or NAMP data were analyzed by U.S. Geological Survey, and they did see some declines and some increases in some species. Um, the surprising things were Fowler's toads were declining and spring peepers were declining, but it's not yet any big decline, and it's not a real reason for uh, concern. Because when we started this survey, we heard those two species on almost every route throughout the state. So there's no place for them to go but down. Now, if the next set shows them continuing to decline, then you know we might want to look into what might be going on. The goals of this program are really to look at things like that, which are you know changes in, in population levels over time. This isn't a project where we expect to get counts. We're not going to know how many gray tree frogs are out there, how many barking tree frogs. We're not even going to be able to know where the endangered species are. But what we will be able to see is if the species are declining or if they're going up over, over time. So it's a really a long-term study. Actually, there's 16 routes, I think, in Delaware right now, and each route has 10 stops. So the routes are predetermined, the stops are predetermined. So each volunteer signs up for a route, they go out. Really, we just require three times per year, but they can go out more if they want within the given time periods. They go to each one of those stops, they listen for calls, frog calls for five minutes and record what they hear, the species that they hear, and a calling level, which is just gives you a general idea of how many frogs are present. I do get some people who talk about uh, why the, the frogs, um, you know, what we're looking for, you know, why the populations are decreasing, and they're just interested in, in helping. Um, a lot of people call and say, well, I hear this in my backyard, and, and uh, but that's not really what we're looking for as far as the routes. We're going to look for areas where maybe you might not hear particular frogs, and then we want to figure out why, why those reasons are, what the reasons are for the frog uh, populations decreasing. Um, but people generally um, seem to be pretty concerned. We've had great response this year. Actually, this year we have a lot of uh, college students that are going to participate in the program. You know, uh, retirees, um, uh, education, people with education background, and then of course people who are just interested in, in amphibians in general. There's always that good feeling when you volunteer, and um, that volunteering may and hopefully will help on the long run. One is I think it's just really interesting, like it's an interesting thing to know like how to um, how to identify the different calls. So at one level I think it's really fun. Uh, at another level I think it's like really important and it's something that we could do to help maybe the environment and it doesn't take much out of us. I mean we have to do a lot more studying. They come to a training like we have tonight. It's an orientation for volunteers. We do it usually every year. There are some years we've skipped if we don't have a lot of new volunteers coming in. Um, so they come to the training. They also have a frog call CD that they listen to to learn the calls. And then the national program, because Delaware's program is part of a, a national program called NAMP, the North American Amphibian Monitoring Project. And they have a website that has a lot of good training skills too, or tools too. One of them is a public quiz. People can go on and hear frog calls and guess what they are, and or know what they are, hopefully. And you know, you know, just um, that's a good way to test your skill level. And even before they start doing their surveys, they're supposed to, by NAMP standards, to pass to take a, a quiz and pass it. Overall. Um we do have a rise in the number of volunteers. I think people are really you know, looking at the environmental issues and, and trying to 
you know, see what's going on and help in any way they can. We don't have the environment, we don't have anything. 